today's one is just on a few little tips for SketchUp that you may never have thought of, uh, you may never have come across, you may never have been told. Um, now, there might be a few that you've that, that, that you're aware of, but I think these little tips will definitely help SketchUp users of all um, abilities. Um, so the first one is um, adding segments to arcs and circles. Now there's nothing worse, particularly when you're doing a, a CGI and you see people using the sort of st the segment count out the box in circles and arcs. That kind of poor geometry, if you like, will become very obvious in, in visuals. One example of which is when, say you're doing a street scene and you're just, you know, just modeling a, a footpath or something and say that's, say that's a curb or something and you see such sort of a loose segment if you like. Um, say you've got a build in the background, you're taking, you're taking a visual from here. Well, that will let the whole image down basically. So, what you want to do is when you're doing um, circles or arcs, the second that you've hit the tool, or you know, the first thing you do once the tool's selected, so I've just hit A on the keyboard, is you simply type a number. Now, if you look bottom right there, um, it says twelve. So if we just jump, just jump back to line, jump back to arc, just so we know, it's, you know, right on the selection, the out the box is twelve. So if you if you change that to say sixty, simply just type sixty and enter. You've then added to the number of segments. With hidden geometry turned on now, that is much better geometry. So it will look like a truer curve. The same goes for circles. C for circle, and then, uh, sorry, let's do that again. And you can see the bottom right, sides 24, set the sides to 100, and same again, much smoother geometry. As I say, that will um, reap uh, rewards when it comes to your CGI work. Um, one thing I would like to point out though is if you go mental with the, the, the amount of segments and, and sides and things, it does make your scene a bit heavier so just be mindful of that okay the next one is a uh, using the array tools now there's a multiply and a divide option so the multiply one i think the best example is when doing a quick staircase so if i just make that a component hit m for the move tool control to pop up the little plus sign and then you, you simply you know, select the bottom of the step, top of the step, and then you just type in 10x, and that is 10 multiplied. And then what's quite cool is you can then select the one step, edit that, and you've got a nice open thread staircase using the same, um, well, you know, using the array tool. Another one is you could set a total distance like so, and then do 10 slash. And then what that does is it equally spaces the number of copies between the, those two distances you've set. So again, very, very powerful tool when you're trying to introduce uh, repeating elements. The next little tip is using the scale tool for reasons other than scaling, obviously. So one thing, right, is using it to find the center point of something. So if you've got a smaller cube there and you're trying to snap it to the center of that, well, it's quite simple because it's simple geometry. Like so. However, if it isn't that simple, and you've got something a little more complex, like a bit of text, right? How, how do you find the center point of, of that in its entirety? Now what I do, right, is I use the scale tool 
it's basically to identify where that center point is and then just and then just take a stab at it to be honest so you've got the center point there i can then hit move and then know it's about there that's near enough basically you can see there that's pretty good on the uh, on the center point just over a meter that side and there we go so that's one thing you can also use the scale tool to move things so for example if I create an opening there and then just make a window just for example always give, give your glass a thickness no matter what I can then use the scale tool to move this in position there like so now that might seem a bit of a useless skill um, but I'm a believer of the quickest way to do something is to do the one thing all at once and that is th the same can be said for sticking in the same tool so say you've got a task that requires the scale tool well you're quicker sticking in the one tool than chopping and changing between tools so that's just an example of how you can stay in the one tool as I say, you can, you know, something similar there. Just to get it to the other side. Uh, the next one is how to use the follow me tool properly. Um, and what I mean by that is, if, if I just use an example, what you want to do is, um, well, sorry, in this, in this example, I'm going to just do a, a bit of skating board or something. Could be coving as well. use that as an example what you want to do is you want to trace the route and make sure that the route and your template is in the same group then a little trick is to triple click so it selects everything then hold control shift to deselect your template and then use the follow me tool it's then in its own group and if you've got multiple instances of skates I would suggest that they all go in the same group it just makes it easier for if you want to make cuts and things maybe at door openings uh, and what have you so that's a good good method if you like good practice for using the uh, the follow me tool Another one is messing with uh, the aspect ratio of your exported image. So, for example, if you want to do a an axo, some, you know, an ISO, whatever, um, you might want that on a square export. If you go File Export, and I know you can save this in Photoshop or something, but if you go Export and Options now, it's gonna stick to the uh, aspect ratio. Of your screen whereas if you hit restore and do something like that you then go export to the graphic and the aspect ratio has changed okay and the last couple of tips um, the second to last one being that you can change the field of view within the scene if you if you click and drag down it makes the, the field of view sharper and if you go the opposite way obviously it has the opposite effect now that is a good tip 
for making corner shots look more dramatic. So if you just go right the way like that, nice two-point perspective. Already that's making a cube look pretty interesting. But I also use it for when I'm working in tight spaces. So for example, say you've got a, a bathroom scene that you're working on it, you know, in terms of the modeling, then you might find that the out the box field of view is is tricky to navigate. You know, so you, you end up with think you know doing things like that. So if you hit field of view and then really drag it down, what it does is it gives the sense of a larger space and it gives you a bit more room to work with um, when you're working on your models. Uh, and then last but not least, this might be known to a few people, um, but if you've got a heavy scene. Obviously, we haven't here, so I can't really demonstrate it, but you have to just take my word for it. If you've got a heavy scene and you want to save it without crashing, um, or just quicker, obviously, you know, time is always of the essence. Um, if you want to save something quicker, just basically take all the geometry out of the view and hit save. And what you'll find is it's saving quicker because the computer's using less RAM to calculate. So there's a few little tidbits for you in SketchUp. Hopefully help.